So hello everybody to this little tutorial about how to install Driven by Moss or Reaper. First thing you need to do is go to my website, which is mosscramers.de and there you can either click here on Reaper because there's normally always something new for Reaper as well, or go to music software and then Driven by Moss Reaper to download the software. If you have questions or bugs, always write in a thread in the Reaper forum. So here's the link which directly takes you there. And it's a good place to comment on that one. You see, it's always a little bit longish. And that's always a place I will definitely read your questions and answer them. So for all of the different devices, there's lots of lots of tutorials. They are normally done with Bitwig, but the functionality is nearly identical. And simply check out the Driven by Moss manual about the differences between using it with Bitwig and Reaper. So if you scroll down, you find the latest version. So this tutorial is for the version 26 and later versions. Before that, it was quite different to install. And the main difference is now that since version 26, Driven by Moss uses the native MIDI ports, which are delivered directly from Reaper, which has several advantages as we see later on. So pick the version for your operating system. So the first one is for Windows. Then we have one for the Intel version of Mac OS and one for the ARM version. Check that you have a pretty recent Mac OS because I can only test on the latest Mac OS and it does not work work too much into the past. Lastly, for Linux as well, I can only test on Ubuntu. Specifically, I test on Ubuntu Studio and I know there are some issues with other Linux versions, so you can give it a try, but I only test on Ubuntu Studio. So I picked here the Windows version and did download it and what is in this package, you find the main library, which has different names on a different operating systems. And then you have here the Java runtime. So this is coming directly. So it's all one package. You don't need to install Java or anything. This is the whole package. And then you have the actual software. You have the documentation, which is very important because in there you find some license information, but also the manual. And you should put a link to the manual anywhere on your desktop or wherever you can find it. And yeah, check it out and read it. It contains a lot of information before you post questions. I cannot install it. Please read this document. You don't need to read it fully. What you should absolutely read is the introduction, the installation for Reaper. And then for Reaper, it's absolutely helpful to read the limitations, workarounds, and what are the differences to Bitwig to better understand how this software works. All For all these things, there are also YouTube tutorials, but here everything is in one place and uh, yeah, faster to process. So uh, looking at this documentation, this also gives you the locations where you need to put these files on the different operating systems. On Windows, it's in your user folder, sadly a hidden path. So app data is normally not visible. So you need to show hidden files and then you can find this app data folder. And in there it's in roaming and there you find Reaper and there you find user plugins. But this path is also explained in the manual and here it's to see it's C users and your username, app data, roaming, Reaper. And then in user plugins, and also on that level, you will find not only the Reaper configuration files, but also later on driven by Moss configuration files in case you want to back up them or copy them to a different computer. They are located in this Reaper folder. So, but going into the user plugins, which should be normally empty, but also if you have, for example, SWS installed or things like that, they are also in here. So make sure you know which files are for from which extension you might have installed. Yeah, the best thing here for Driven by Moss is to simply copy over everything 
actually you only need the Java runtime, this folder and the library, but nevertheless, it's good to know here are the documents as well. And you need the resources for certain devices, which contains a template, which you need to load in a device to make it work with Driven by Moss. So it's a good idea to have everything in one place. And it's also important to mention if you do an update to it, so if there's a new release of Driven by Moss, do not simply copy it over, delete the old files first and then copy them over. Otherwise you get duplicated versions. For example, here Driven by Moss Reaper, this jar file has always a version number. And if you simply copy it over, you have two versions and it depends highly on operating system which one is picked and then you might get really strange effects and nobody knows what's actually the problem. But the only thing you actually need to do is copy all files in here. Also make sure that they look like this. They should not be flat. So these folders need to be there. And also there should be no additional folder. So these files need to be directly in user plugins. If you did that, you can simply start Reaper then. Here is Reaper, and there you go to Options, Preferences, and in the Preferences, you find here at the bottom Control OC Web where you can add Driven by Moss. Here it is for Reaper. OK, and then we have it here. And let's first confirm that, which is a good idea to have this running and confirmed. So the new thing with version 26 and later versions of Driven by Moss is that we use the native ports provided here by Reaper and therefore you need to open them in Reaper first. So I have here connected my push to which you don't see in the video, but you have to believe me. And in this long list of devices, there is a push to here. And then you enable that. You can choose if you want to have the input in all or not. That's up to your choice. And that's also now easier to do now that you can use the normal input, which is coming from Ableton Push 2. So this is the input where all the nodes played on the push, but also some fake nodes, for example, in the chord mode, are uh, sent also via this input port. And you do not need anymore to use a virtual keyboard as a workaround. So that's much more to the point. But back to the configuration, we also need to enable the output port. So that's also push to, and we enable also the output port. With the output port, it's very important that you do enable, do not send reset messages, because it's pretty weird when you otherwise play on start, Reaper always sends zero values for all CC, MIDI CC commands, which means all LEDs normally go off or something on your controller. So make sure this is set to no reset. Then some controllers might need a clock to show for some, some blinking in clock sync or to show the tempo. And then it's helpful in that case to enable send clock to output. And this did not work before with my implementation, but you can do that now here by checking these item. Yeah, so that's the thing you need to do. Open the input and output ports first. Another thing uh, you can do if you want to quickly reach a Driven by Moss dialog and do not want to go via preferences, uh, look for that, double click that and so on to get to the dialog. It's better to assign an action and you can do that in show action list. And if you filter here by Driven by Moss, you will see for option, you see one option to open the configuration window. You can also directly go to the parameter settings, the project settings, or want to restart all controllers. So only the first one is really the most helpful. I already assigned Control Shift and J to that. And then you can simply press this button combination to open up the dialog. And here we did not have any controller assigned, which normally show up here and below you get some locking information, sometimes hopefully not error messages or some helpful info. So what you can do is try to detect the controller 
And in that case, with the Avon Push, this works directly, which is nice. But for some controllers, for example, if you want to have generic Flexi, which works with each and every controller, or you want to use the different Mackey protocols, which work also for many controllers, it's not automatically detected and you need to add them manually. And then you can go to configuration. Also, if you edit it manually, you need to set the MIDI input and outputs first. And it's important to note that only the input and output ports show up, which are enabled in the Reaper setting. So that's why we only see here the two ports we have enabled in the Reaper settings. If you enable them afterwards, because you forgot to do that, you can click on Rescan MIDI devices and then they also show up here in these drop down lists. And then you have all the specific settings for your controller, which I explained in all the different videos as well as the manual. Yeah, here you see now some info that it's restarted and uh, yeah, it's really running nicely and if we go here you could also see that there's MIDI coming in if we select to record MIDI from here the push and that's also working nicely. That's basically all you need to do. Don't forget to check out the manual as I said and the manual contains then specific installation notes as well for your different controllers. For example, if you need to install a template, for example, like here with the XGEM from ESI, you need to install a template. And these specific configurations are then documented in the chapters for the individual devices. So I hope this was helpful and if this does for some reason not help you and you cannot find the solution in the manual right into the Reaper forum as I showed you before. And yeah, have lots of fun with that and make some fucking news.